welcome to a brand new episode of Sequel Rights, the podcast where we take a look at the franchises that make you go, they made how many of those? And we give each and every sequel a fair trial. My name is Justin Camps, and I'm here with Elizabeth Helley and Tyler Hymanson. And we are here talking about Planet of the Apes again. 2001. 2001. Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. Not to be confused with the apes in 2001. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Yeah. They are not here. No, uh, absolutely no connection. Um, And uh, not only that, we have a very special guest with us uh, today. Hannah Blackman is here. Hello. Co-host of the uh, authorized... Oh, God dang it. The Authorized Novelizations Podcast, I was where so we close. read yeah. novelizations of movies. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> That's right. And uh, you guys are covering Planet of the Apes as well right now, right? Yes, yeah. There are like 20 Planet of the Apes books, and so we're breaking it up into sections. Oh, my God. Uh, my, God. my co-host, Andrew, wanted to do them all in a row, and I was like, bruh, no. Dang. It has too many apes. <laughs> so 20 books. So, th- so that means yeah. there's some that are not based on... Yeah. The original five movies have se- six books related to them wow. uh, including four novelizations and then two additional texts wow. this movie has like six books for what? no god reason what? like i it <laughs> didn't do well there's no reason for this there's a novelization there's a junior novelization and then each of those has two spin-off books oh my god wow. okay yeah, it's a crime uh, so then, are you also <laughs> watching? Are you also watching them. the movies to compare yes, them? Course, okay, yeah. yeah. As one, wow. oh my god, that that's the exercise. That's wow, a lot of work, that's a lot of work. He almost work. died at fourteen movies for Land Before Time, so oh I can't god. imagine. That's too much. Yeah, it, 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 oh, yes, fourteen, they yeah, fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end, is the. Does no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> oh, Honestly, good. <laughs> Maybe someday. Uh, yeah. oh. But I can't. Ima- I can't imagine more than that. So yeah. uh, you're stronger than us. That's amazing. I love the commitment. Um, well, yeah. Let's get through the the fanfare. But I definitely want to ask you about some of the ones we've already gone <laughs> through. Since you are our expert, I try to read the books to things when I can. Like I did read the Planet of the Apes, like yeah. Pierre Bouvier novel. Uh, but when we did our first episode, but I have not read all these other ones. So you are <laughs> you're gonna have to help us. Yeah, my to know about it. Can't wait to find out what extra insights the novelizations have, especially the junior novelizations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do they tone down the horrific violence and <laughs> sexual tension we see in this? Oh, God. <laughs> hey, uh, oh, boy. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Hannah. Hopefully, uh, you know, uh, you know, you, sometimes you just get stuck with the ones that are crazy. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. this one, like this one. <laughs> yeah, maybe not my first choice, but I did choose this <laughs> yeah. one. You did. So yeah. I did. Scheduling. Due to a yeah. scheduling. Uh, <laughs> I would have chosen a different one, but. Sure. No, <laughs> we're, we're happy to talk about all of them. Um, so, yeah. Uh, in the meantime, if you have suggestions for future franchises that we should cover, uh, email us at sequelrights at gmail.com. And then also reach out to us on the socials, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Sequel Rights. And you can also listen to all of our episodes on YouTube. And yeah, rate and review wherever you're listening. Go to those YouTube streams, as I said last week. Just press play. Let it play the entire time. <laughs> It'd be really helpful to us yeah. uh, to leave comments. Also, wherever you're using social media, share out some of your the older episodes that we've gone through. We're catching up on a lot of things this year. It's a big year for sequels. There's a new Bad Boys movie coming. Oh, There's sure already is. more Chucky. Uh, That's so right. there is time to, to uh, catch up. That's right. That's right. All right. Before we get in the trailer here, let me just make sure we got everything set up here, Ryan. Let me see here. Activate reading systems. Okay. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. All right. We're good. We're good. All right. Trailer time. One day they'll tell a story and some will say it was just a fairy tale about a human who came from the stars <laughs> and changed our world. In a world where freedom is history. Where am I? What is this place? Get a roach and get them clean! Brutality is law. Rise when your master enters. The powerful rule by fear. Next you'll be telling us these beasts have a soul. <laughs> is there a soul in there? 
It's disgusting the way we treat humans. How the hell did they get like this? What other way would they be? If they see you on the street, they kill you on sight. You stay here, you're already dead. Which way are you from? United States Air Force. I'm going back to my... Some humans have escaped. Is there another way out of the city? I can show you the way. Yeah! Man, oh, I want to wow. just let that rock wow. keep going. Yeah, that's... You know, a lot. Yeah. You hear that? Those are, those are the those are the dulcet tones of two thousand one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody in the trailer world. Indeed. <laughs> uh, so, Hannah, what was your kind of history with the Apes franchise before you started on your recent journey? Yeah, of course, I had seen this movie. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I saw Fair. Planet of the Apes two thousand one in a movie theater. Okay, uh-huh. why? I don't know. <laughs> I, think I, I think I like Mark Wahlberg, and I okay. always have, and that's probably what took me to the theater at age like eleven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be like what? this apes um and then yeah very recently got into the rest of the ape world okay. and now i'm like i love apes yes <laughs> yeah so are we honestly yeah. this far in it turns out these movies um rock yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're all great uh so i had never actually seen this movie um that it's something that you guys have been shocked by this entire time yes. but, <laughs> but you both saw it right oh yeah yeah i saw it in theaters i i agree this is probably also uh, other than like, you know, kind of catching it offhand in some of the originals on TV in the background, like when my dad was watching them, I never was like fully engaged. This was the first thing that I was like big Tim Burton fan, uh, you know, because I was a, like Nightmare for Christmas and all that stuff growing up. And so I went to go see this with my friends and I cannot, I was like thinking I cannot remember a single thing about it other than the <laughs> ending. And so I was excited to kind of watch this again with fresh eyes and see what I thought as an adult. And but did, when you team. were a teen, did you come out being like, that was great? Or I don't think so. I, <laughs> okay. I, I, you don't I don't remember. So I've been thinking remember. about this a lot okay. because I do remember, I, remember. I can't remember exactly which theater I saw it in, but you know, I, I think that it's quite possible that this is the first movie that I saw that I scoffed at. <laughs> wow. <laughs> which, is which, is big, which is a big moment for me. <laughs> but like, I remember the ending and just being like... Fuck you. <laughs> it shattered those rose colored glasses of like, yeah. wow, movies All are movies cool. are good. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. That's, okay. That's, ooh, man. Sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just seeing it for the first time, it was great. And you liked uh, it. Right? Well, I mean, it compared was, to coming off five perfect. So, yeah. Movies, uh, We've been interviewing <laughs> people um, for the last five episodes, some of who are hardcore original apes people. Mm-hmm. And they refer to this movie as the movie that cannot be named or shall <laughs> not be spoken or whatever. You know, yeah, like yeah. They, they act like it, like it, like if you mention it, it's like you said Voldemort or whatever, you know, <laughs> like it's a big thing. So, I had low expectations. I mean, it's a movie. Um, it's just very strange. Like many of the decisions, I'm just like, why would anyone decide X, Y, and Z? Like, there's just I can't fathom more the logical... sexual tension. Yeah, it just uh, yeah, very Duh. strange. Yeah. And I was saying before we started recording, like the Wikipedia article on this movie specifically is like so long because it went through so much development hell, and that it's very well documented all these 20th century Fox executives shenanigans that went into (laughs) canceling the various versions of this movie that we could have had earlier. Um, Just complete insanity. And it's all documented there on Wikipedia and probably various books like his, his more, you know, history books. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know this one. uh, Yeah. the, The, the beginning of the movie, I was like, this movie's too horny. It's too horny. <laughs> it is. I mean, honestly, from the first it gets time, a less horny as it goes, and, but. and that's a, that's rare for this podcast. I don't think we've ever made yeah. that. We've never, never made that blo- proclamation. Horny. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, from the very first time she that and we covered Helena species. Bonham Carter's <laughs> character uh, Ari Ari yeah. sets eyes on him, like she is like hooked. Well, it's like you, you get the sorry Hannah. Oh no, I was just gonna say like in terms of sequeling, I think that's what's kind of interesting about this movie is that it is clearly being like. All that stuff we wanted to do in the seventies, but we thought was fucked up. Yeah. Let's do it now. Yeah, let's do it. Right. Yeah. All these ideas that we had. Let's this like like this movie feels to me like all sequels in one sequel. But like, what if we did all of it it's, big now? We're kissing apes. We're doing uprising. Right. Like, yeah. The whole thing. Yeah, the whole it's thing. like too much. But I I kind of respect the impulse to just yep. like throw it all on the table. Yeah, yeah. I, think when, I think when young Tim Burton went and went saw the, the original movies in Burbank, That's he, all kinda, he, remembered. he kinda wanted to kiss those apes. <laughs> Look, it's the just, apes want to kiss Charlton no, Heston. No, yeah. Right. And I love that yeah. about her. Yeah. Zero's like, what if I kiss 
just human yeah, men. Yeah, I'm yeah. just curious. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, and in that first twice. movie, yeah. like that was kind <laughs> of weird, but also we were kind of like, oh, it's the 60s, the 70s. He's an cute. old man. Yeah. Like whatever. He's like 50. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, but this one, like. Clearly, society is not doing that anymore at this point in time in 2001. And also, like, if if, if he, they had just had the kiss at the end, I feel like it wouldn't have been as weird. It's all of the weird sexual yes. tension throughout the whole movie yeah. it's that like, makes the kiss weird. It's like every single scene they were like, okay, okay, now you're, you guys are going to follow the dialogue in the script. You're going to say this, that, that. Okay, but I want you to think the whole time you want to fuck him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, you say the lines, but remember, you're thinking inside, like, you want to fuck this dude. It's um, bestiality, yeah. and we yeah. must admit it. Yeah. It's very odd. And it's not even just between her. It's like her and Mark Wahlberg's character. It's like her and Thade and like all these people, Thade and everyone. Uh, there's a lap dance, yes. uh, like yeah. strip tease yeah. that happens. We just, don't we don't need to see what their like sexual practices are like. <laughs> I don't, I was like, there's a guy like uh, cool. cleaning cool. his armpits with flowers. Like yeah. to, it's uh, Paul Giamatti. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> we must be clear. It because is, is because oh, that told, one was him. Yeah, because yeah. oh, he was, was told that he smelled like humans. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, the strip tease thing was it wasn't even that wasn't even like really main characters it was like oh we have a scene where they're running through the city let's have them interrupt like a sexual it was encounter. it was hijinks you're, really <laughs> yeah you're, and, and in this movie those hijinks better be horny <laughs> that's right it's 2001 yeah. nothing could possibly go wrong <laughs> yeah. in the world and we want to get horned up that's right <laughs> that's right i was like yeah, Eliz, you're you're like dipping your toes into what th this movie really gives us the, the main thing it really gives us is finally all those ape civilization things we wanted to see. Sure. True. Ape barber, ape basketball, <laughs> uh, ape cool guys with ape, leather jackets yeah, smoking yeah, a bong or yes, whatever the ape, fuck ape, ape, ape greasers. <laughs> ape greasers. Ape, ape carnival barker guy <laughs> with, a, with a, I don't know, And I would say the most important person. gift of all, ape Paul Giamatti. Giamatti. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Like straight up. They gave the, her, the reason for the season. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> They gave him a repainted Grinch costume and, <laughs> and made him act like Jim Carrey okay. this entire movie. The makeup is good. Know, the makeup is good. I'm it just is. kidding. So yeah, the makeup is uh, different than they used to do. I, I, I spent a long time like looking at old pictures and then looking at this movie and being like, what is it that's bothering me? Or why is it off? You know, a lot of them look really good. I think the gorillas, um, especially mm -hmm. Michael Clark Duncan, like look amazing. Um, Paul Giamatti and then that other uh, orangutan Tang or whatever he is with the like side yeah. ventral things. It looks amazing. Um, but like Helena Bottom Carter and all the other women, the like women ones chimps look bad. And I think yeah. it's because they were like, Oh, we want them to be able to emote with their mouth. So we're going to use their real mouths instead of giving them like the full, like, Snout. Yeah, snout that like zero and, and also like they wanted to really make them differentiated from the men, which the old movies never did. Like yeah. Zira and Cornelius yes, were like basically exactly the same, but yeah. just with like a little bit of difference so you could tell them apart. Like, but they weren't like, oh wow, that one's obviously a woman and that one's obviously a man. Do like this was like a horniness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this was, like this was an iterative process, like with most productions where like they start like they showed Tim Burton the look, and he was like, No, I don't want to have sex with that yet. Right. <laughs> This is the like, first like movie he meets Helena Bonham Carter. It's true. Carter. Not I would have like, whole thing. She's, yeah. she's hot, though. Can we make her hotter? Yeah, yeah. so they, they, this hotter. is the movie hotter. that they like meet, meet and fall in love. And his, we saw more mouth. His girlfriend at the time is also in the movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then, oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she, they, cool guy Tim Burton. For yeah, me, <laughs> I, I did think that the makeup was pretty impressive. And I feel like, for me, it was kind of like, almost reaching like an uncanny valley kind of thing where it was like so good that it was making them like look a little off putting because it's like you could still sell, tell it was a human but it looked like so realistic like an ape and it was just like making me kind you of You were yearning like, for the uncanny valley here? No, so no, I, I, no, I was saying it was like freaking I was saying it was freaking me out because yeah. it was like it The original too, like, too makeup real. Do I want to have sex with these apes? <laughs> God, no. That's not what I'm saying. It's the, okay. The original okay um the original makeup covers their mouth with like prosthetic but uses more of their human nose whereas these ones cover their noses more and make their noses more ape-like but use more of the human mouth and yeah, I, think I think that is what is throwing me off was creepy, and creepy. then they try also all the women are like smooth and have like no wrinkles which is not, if you google like baby chimpanzee it's still all wrinkled because that is what the their skin is like but because they're like we want them to be sexy they like 
smooth out <laughs> all the women's skin and then yeah like and they don't have like the sideburn no like, yeah like, god like, forbid chop hair <laughs> which is iconic to the ape makeup right. i think mm-hmm. so so that's it. what it was I, I spent a lot of time just being like what why is this bothering me so much and apparently I, when they were like we hired tim roth rick baker did the makeup right he yeah. was like his nose is too big we can't, we can't possibly, yeah. like, he's got a huge fucking nose. I don't know how to put that under ape makeup. Yeah. Oh and they God. figured it out. And I think he looks good. Yeah. But, like, he doesn't look like Tim Roth. No, not at no. all. In a way no, that no. is like, Paul Giamatti looks like Paul Giamatti. The, yeah. the man was made <laughs> to be does, an ape. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. perfect as an orangutan. Um, and Tim Roth, you're like, where is he? <laughs> I think his, yeah, his makeup was most impressive. Um, and it was like, I, f- I felt bad for him because he's like got to be so aggro the whole time. He's like mm-hmm. never he's an insane. He never person. has a. He's like hunched over and is always angry and he never like has a smile on his face ever. It's like always like I'm gonna murder someone right now. In any second, I'm gonna <laughs> kill someone. That's not what I hire Tim Roth for. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That tiny little man. No, well, no. and like one of the stories in this insane Wikipedia article is that he got so angry when he found out that they were that he had to do this whole scene with Charlton Heston because of Charlton Heston's NRA Mm -hmm. shenanigans Mm -hmm. Tim Roth was like I don't want to do this but like it's too late everyone's already in makeup like I have to just get through this scene or that we're 92 years yeah where he's my quote-unquote father and I have to just do a scene with him in the lines but he's like come out and said like if I knew he was going to be in the movie at all I wouldn't have done it yeah. like that that's how angry he was that's, apparently I mean the fact that he didn't even consider that Heston was still alive and of course they would try and get him yes. for something like Tim yeah, yeah come on sweetie Tim. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like kind of insult to injury that it's a whole scene with just him it's not yeah. like a smaller cameo it's but such a yeah. weird scene too because like Heston at this point like big NRA guy and that scene is like guns are so bad and they make yeah. humans bad yeah. right. guns are yeah. the problem with yeah. humanity like it's it, a weird scene strange. that he yeah. should showed up and got in a fuck ton of ape makeup and was like, I'll do it. <laughs> they, like it leads me to believe he didn't know it was happening. <laughs> <laughs> he was very old. Yeah. He was just like, he time, was before time. <laughs> time before time. Time before time. Time before time. Not to be confused with the lamp before <laughs> yeah, time. Like, yeah. So close. So close. I love Charles. In the time before yes. time. <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and now that you say that, because like Tim Roth, he also has, his character has to come in and like bow to him basically. Right. And show like affection. Yeah. It's like, that must have been so much. But I didn't even, I didn't even know until after that when I read about it that right. that was Charlton Heston. You oh, really? He's not, I didn't know I mean, either. unless you heard about it, you could recognize him. Yeah. I mean, it did, it did not no. make sense to me at all that he I was would, doing the damn you all to hell line. I was like, why would an ape be the one? Yeah. Why would they choose to have an ape say it? But it's because it's Charlton Heston. They wanted damn him to say you. his line. Yeah. yeah, He has a bunch of lines. He could say all sorts of things. Right. That movie is full of lines. He could have laughed at the, that little flag. He could have <laughs> been like, we were supposed to repopulate the earth with her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well... Okay, so Mark Wahlberg's in this movie too. <laughs> he sure is, and I think he's good. Dead silence. <laughs> I think he looks very think young. His face I is like. He's, huh? I think watching this time. movie, it's like, boy, he has become a better actor over time. Has he? Has he? always needed a good director. Yes, right. He needs guidance. He needs a firm hand. He's not getting that here. I do think he has really strong moments of being scared, of being shocked, yep. of like having the big emotional, like Heston esque, like, what am I looking at? stuff i like it i think it's smart that this movie doesn't try and just make him heston again yeah. mm-hmm. he's a different type of astronaut mm-hmm. and he never takes his shirt off sad <laughs> <laughs> sorry it was like a waste if I, you're gonna have a human person on the planet of the apes they should yeah. be very naked agree we got that in the first one like and al- the almost, one. Al- almost full frontal they're like take the clothes off that man <laughs> well it made no sense too because after he crashed and when he got out of the ship his clothes were all like tattered and worn and i was like how did that happen like under the spacesuit? like i was like, are they trying to show that hey, it's oh. been thousands of years that doesn't make sense like his clothes wouldn't age like it was very weird but he's it, the whole thing is that colleen atwood tim burton's famous costume designer was yeah. let loose on this completely unnecessarily <laughs> like they don't nobody needs that many clothes in this movie but she cannot be stopped like the boy is wearing like a, a pan outfit like yeah. a peter pan yeah. type yeah. thing All of like the human the like yeah. feral human clothing is yeah. like way too cute right yeah. she's got like gladiator uh, wrap yeah. tie up sandals that go like all the way up to her thighs and like it was 2001 to be fair <laughs> even the she's clothes, wearing a push up yeah. Right? yeah all the Ape clothes are just 
way too much for them to be living in this like quote unquote semi primitive society. It's like, oh my god, this is crazy. I mean, the main problem with the movie, in my opinion, is that the human beings just like all talk to each other. Yes, right. It doesn't make no goddamn sense. Yeah, they can all talk. It's a real problem. I was like, so the only thing special about Mark Wahlberg is that he knows some other things. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) he has a gun. Maybe slightly smarter. In the original, you can you can forgive ape society for thinking humans are essentially like dogs, wild dogs, because they don't talk and they barely wear clothes and they're like messy little fucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they hate them. Right, it makes sense. They they have a full society in this movie. They're talking (laughs) to you, same language, just like they speak a different language or yep. make guttural barks like it's, it's crazy and they're not and speaking Tim portuguese Roth is opening mouths and going like where's your soul what do yeah, you have it do you have a brain in, in there yeah. they speak baby they speak. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy it's, it's, it's bizarre i did think in that was an odd like, choice what are the choices being yeah made? well yeah. and like the human society and like the slavery is already like advanced enough that they have like the drama between like house slaves mm-hmm. and house humans and, yeah. and regular slave humans that are living out in the tribes or whatever, which yep. like, so it just, yeah, it's a lot. It's very weird. <laughs> very weird. Um, but yeah, so this one also there's time travel immediately. We got time travel. The other one yeah. had time travel, but not quite as in a, it wasn't like fly into this convenient time cloud and disappear yeah. into oh, the house <laughs> line curve. Where. Yeah, this, this one made more sense <laughs> yeah. scientifically. This is just like a random like I don't know who who knows. And he's just are. like he's just not on Earth too. It's this other planet completely. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I gotta say too, there's a pretty great jump scare in the beginning when he uh, the, the, the opening of the movie is like this crazy Danny Elfman like mm-hmm. score thing where they're showing all the intricate designs of General Thade's armor or whatever. Um, but then it opens up with this somewhat hilarious sequence of Pericles, the uh, mm. only character I, uh, you know, emotionally bonded with throughout the film. <laughs> <laughs> um, it must have been rough when his ass got smacked. <laughs> I was like, this, at the end of the movie, like, this poor, real chimpanzee doesn't know what the fuck is happening. So sad. Um, uh, but he's like trying, you think he's flying a spaceship for real, and then he like starts to crash, and he's freaking out, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, like Mark Wahlberg steps into frame of what you think is like <laughs> not a screen. And I was like, ah! <laughs> no, <Wahlberg. got> <laughs> he got me. He got me. That was great. But yeah. So I was just trying to set up kind of like how we got here in the first place. Yeah. I did like to how uh, Since it comes Mark back. Wahlberg got a video postcard from his friends who were at MTV spring break. Right? Yeah. <laughs> speaking of the novelization. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We weren't speaking of it. But no, we want that to. That scene in the novelization, he like gets a card from his mom who's like, okay. hey, but like we miss you. We love you. I'm a normal mom. And the fact that they took one look at Mark Wahlberg and we're like, um, frap rose. <laughs> hey, man, good. when you come nice. in here, <laughs> Look, they got married. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never I, see those people again. No, <laughs> yeah. no. Who knows where he, yeah, who knows even Think of all are. the lost spring breaks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Maybe I they did. got turned into apes. I, I don't know. <laughs> the movie doesn't make sense. Yes. <laughs> uh, I did read a thing that, speaking of Mark Wahlberg and his performance in this, that he turned down the Matt Damon role in oh Ocean's Eleven yeah. in order to make this movie. For some reason, Thank every God. actor <laughs> like, <laughs> would be good in that. Are I'm here to stand up for Mark. I think Are he would be sure? good. At, yes, I think at this in moment in his career... He has this. He could do what Matt Damon is doing in Ocean's Eleven. Perhaps uh, not as successfully as Matt, who's perfect and beautiful, and we love yeah. him. But he has that sort of like sweet boy, innocent thing. He can play like, oh, I'm just like a nice kid. You know what I mean? I would. Yeah, let me do the thing. Come on. I would like, say. I, think he could do I don't. It. Okay. I agree. No, I agree with you. Thank it is. You. It is. I don't weird. know if I buy it. You know, it is weird that he went like three kings and did Boogie Nights. And like the like he's good in those. And then there's like five years after this where like they like, nope, you're like you're now our dumb pretty boy and we're gonna make you bad in all these movies. Oh, yeah. yeah, the first like five actors in the Wikipedia page, even you know how it normally says their character and how they were cast or whatever? Yeah. It just says what was the awesome role they turned down in order to do this. So I feel like the producers of this and the scheduling were just very rigid and they were like, Nope, you can't do it. You gotta cancel everything. Everything like so. I don't know. This, this is gonna this, be the biggest yeah, t- movie of 2001. Yeah. Yeah. Roth was gonna be Aragon. <laughs> <laughs> it was something. Yeah, yeah, it was something like that. I, oh, I think it was Snape. Right. Oh, oh yeah. really? So, yeah, yeah. It Severus, is Severus Snape. Snape yeah. yeah. That's Which like what? what? Different. Yeah. Okay. Different. If there's a whole list of these, let's run. Let's run Just down do the really choices. Quick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, it was Ocean's Eleven. Uh, Severus Snape. Um, what was the other one you said? Uh, 
scheduling. Elena Bonham Carter uh, was going to be in a fulfilling loving Hansu relationship. Was gonna be <laughs> Michael Clark Duncan. Michael character. Clark Duncan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's it. Okay. I think wow. that's it. But yeah, it was just strange because the articles don't usually do that like yeah, for yeah. all of them. But yeah. Um, so what else about the novelization? <laughs> um, this is not the best of the novelization. Okay. Like, it's very, <laughs> this, this yeah. is, yeah, it's one of those things where like some novelizationists can take the bones and really build something good off of those bones. And when the bones are bad, it's harder to do something good with them. And I kind of liked this novelization, but it's not adding a lot, really. Although it has a lot of scenes. We were talking about how when Ari is like very horny for Leo Davidson. <laughs> 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 A name I remember. Thank you. Um, In the book, there's a lot of Leo going like, there's no way. There's no fucking way. This is weird and gross. And I can't even fathom thinking about it because she's an ape. And meanwhile, there's a human woman here who is also kind of off-putting to me. Like it's a very, like the balance of horniness in that book is like, Less horny? What if we got a little less? <laughs> yeah. What if this character looked at it and was like, ew. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. inappropriate to be horny in this situation, so I shan't. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. But in the yeah. movie, he's like, but you know what? I'll make out with both of them before I leave <laughs> forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I can't take you with me, but we can Mac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. One of the other things I appreciate about this movie is like, we talked a little bit about this in the last film, where we got to like, kind of see, um, you know, some of the apes move around more like apes and climbing trees and stuff. Mm-hmm. I like the movement of the apes in this where they're like all over the place. Even that, that so part where they're like, jumping. Tyler I disagree, doesn't like, I disagree. <laughs> I feel like the Tim Burton got like, he had a, his friend in the old wire work, like guild. Okay, they're, and they're, he was like, uh, we're on, we're on tough times. Like we need, we need to get the, we, like every, every one of my guys needs a job. And he's like, you know what? There's a point when Tim Roth like, a, gets up and down <laughs> from doing anything like, that isn't a six he's foot He's like, leap. you know, monkeys can jump and like you know, they, they can jump like fucking Power Rangers. Like yes. it's insane. They're well, flying okay. around There's all over the place. There's goofy ones like when the, the sex apes jump up to the chandelier <laughs> and it doesn't fall or anything. The sex apes. <laughs> well, that's like all I know them from. Right. Know. Sure. The sex apes. Um, But I liked like that part when they're like going around door to door and it's like instead of just standing on the ground, like the one ape is like latched on and like knocking on the doors and like swings off. I don't know. I, some of that kind of stuff I liked. You know, Tyler, now that you mention it, I th- think it might be that this movie was a gigantic pyramid scheme for stunt professionals yes. um, <laughs> and, and ADs because like when when we do a child star check-in, like all of the children stunt actors come from three families. There you go. And all of their dads worked on the movie uh, <laughs> as stunt coordinators or ADs. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So. It almost it almost feels like that Tim Burton didn't know what the second unit was up to in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. Yeah, he's like, just go crazy, go nuts. <laughs> I feel like too, like when the movie came out, like there was a lot of hype around uh, like how they were running, like in the final battle sequence. Yeah. Mm. Like I, I remember there. It was hard to see. Of, it was so dusty. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to mention that too. I, I, I just like how the apes were running on the ground and how that was like a big like, whoa, how they do that? You know, I don't know. I feel like. Well, this is bad. also the first one where Terry Notary, the stunt movement coach yeah, starts. Ape man. Yeah, yeah. And he is going to work on the, all the future ones that we are going to watch too. And he has a ape exercise class that you can take as well. Oh. I emailed him about it because I was trying to what? interview him, but he uh, did not respond. And I don't think he's doing the ape exercise anymore because the domain did not uh, <laughs> bounce back <laughs> that domain name. But yeah, he, oh, no. he I mean, look on his Instagram, though. you can see videos of like a class of like 20 people having, they have like these arm cr- Crutch yeah, things yeah. that they use, and they're like running on the beach as apes, and it's like an exercise course. It's cool. I'd like to have the uh, King Kong class of how to use my. Uh, <laughs> I mean, my goal, <laughs> my, my childlike proxy as a weapon. <laughs> my goal was to get an interview with way. him, and yeah. also to force you, Tyler, to take the class. Yeah. Like, I was like, Justin and I are not going to do it. I would maybe do we it. could get Tyler I into the class. Yeah, Absolutely. but I feel way too much shame. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. Oh boy. Are you guys like on the side of apes? Like I know we're all like pro ape, but like yeah. when you watch these movies, you're like, boy, I hope the apes win. Or yeah, like, pro, usually because the man. humans usually. are all horrible. There's never any good mm. ones. Mm, like. Fascinating. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, wait, why would you be pro human? Are you pro human? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I am notoriously. This is, you guys don't know me. You've never met me. <laughs> yeah. in your lives. I am like anti-robot. Yeah. yeah. I am Fair. a notorious like 
if that's not a human being, kill it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I hate E.T. Yeah. I don't like gremlins. Yep. Smush them. And so, <laughs> making a note, I understand. Yep. No, no, no. Don't even worry about feeding <laughs> that gremlin, just pen, kill it. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, that's... I would beat E.T. to death with hammers. Um, I mean, we so... need people like you, when because I... if it were up to bleeding hearts like me, the humans would just get killed. Yeah, we're all the people standing underneath the spaceship in uh, Independence Day. I, I listened to your... Planet of the Apes one, okay. the original episode, and I, you guys don't like Taylor. You think he's an asshole. <laughs> I love him and I want him to thrive. Okay, in the novelization, did they talk about how Taylor wanted to repopulate the Earth with that there one is lady? Not a novelization of the original. Oh, okay, okay. right, right. So, it's just no. the book. Okay, but like in Beneath the Planet of the Apes, he's so lovely to Nova. It's they true. clearly have a true connection. Brent shows up, they hug, they're friends, and I'm like, I love human man. You know, like I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm pro human. <laughs> I'm pro Leo Davidson. You know what I mean? We were probably this pretty anti Taylor, yeah. and it's I get it. He's a jerk, yeah. but he has a big old underbite. And I, love <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I love him. I've gotten into the habit. We've done so many ape episodes, and I'm like, I oh, guess my boyfriend George Taylor, Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> like my beloved That's boyfriend good. George Taylor, and his teeth that get worse. <laughs> yeah. I, feel, I just wanted to ask. It's just a question I've yeah, started asking. That's fair. We, I mean, I feel pretty <laughs> anti-ape about this movie. I'm pretty anti-ape about this the movie. The apes here are very They're nasty. They're like so yeah, aggressive. Crush yeah. Super aggressive. They're very mean. They go to giant battle against the humans for no reason, basically. Well, I don't mean. It's because they were going to go to Kalima or whatever. Is that the same as the Indiana Jones yes. god? Okay. I, yeah. The whole time yeah. I was like, isn't this the thing? Yeah. Except it's I think they say it slightly differently in the movie. It's like. Kalima or something. Kalima, like yeah, which is just a to to dusty sign that says "caution, live animals." That was so funny. I was like, what? As soon as they're did like, nobody like wipe this off a stiff breeze? I know. Like, as soon as they're like, we can't let them get to Kalima. I was like racking my brain. I like, knew. I was thinking, is it California? I was like, I've seen this movie. Like, like what is yeah. it? I can't what remember what it, it was. Yeah. Caution, live animals. <laughs> Do you think that uh, the way they have designed that spaceship and the way they come up to it, that you're supposed to, for a second, yes. think that is the it's Statue, Statue of Liberty? Statue of Liberty, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. It was the sword space station from Marvel, essentially, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. <sighs> I wish All they hail would do less winking. Yeah. Like, I, I think in some ways, and I haven't read the Boulay, okay. but it seems like this is like, a new adaptation of the Boulet as much as it is like a remake. It's not really a remake, right? It's doing the same sort of like concepts in yeah. a new structure, sort of. And I would really love them to be like, and also those old movies don't got nothing to do with us. Like just yeah. like, do your own thing, Tim. Like you don't have to be cute. Yeah. Right? yeah. I would say the only thing really that I think is more hearkening to the Boulet than the movie is the kind of cyclical of like these apes and this society have started because of mm. my ship and the humans and right. the apes that I had. Like there is an element of that in that book, not exactly done the same way, but I can see an argument for the way that this movie ends trying to hearken back more to that because in the book, like Taylor or whatever his name was in the book, um, get gets back to earth and it's also taken over by apes and then the fact that he was just on a different planet the whole time and not earth is also like from the book mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah that's interesting are there any well <laughs> since, since, <laughs> what if, that's so here's, interesting. here's my argument though what if we say it's a different planet full of apes what if it is earth though Right. What if it's it still, still also Earth? Earth. Like, we don't know be. how magnetic space storm works. Yeah. I'm so ready to like get up on a little soapbox and be like, here's how it can fit into the original timeline. And <laughs> then get shot immediately. Like, I, I'm willing to do it. So what are some of the other most like batshit weird things uh, in the, the novelizations from the first five uh, um, movies? that we wouldn't have known from just having seen the films. Oh, what a question. I mean, all of them are good. I think <laughs> okay. every single of the original, there's the four novelizations from the original five movies are really good. They're rich. They're written by like genuine sci-fi authors huh. and a guy who wrote like race relation books. Oh, like, really, really interesting right. stuff. There's like a ton in um, Conquest where Caesars are like, actually human beings are disgusting and you get so much interiority about like his journey through the like mm -hmm. retraining facility, which is yeah. so rich and valuable. Mm -hmm. That stuff's really cool. Um, 
like escape is great. You get so much about Dr. Otto Hasslein and escape from the planet of the <laughs> apes. Cool. Nice. You know, just like a delight of like, you know, that villain from Young and the Restless? Well, here's like 30 pages <laughs> of like, his life, his family, his religious philosophy. Like it's all, it's just, I wish I had like made a list of good no, details, no, but they're no, all great. really like rich texts okay. that are, and even battle, which is not a great movie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a kind of a rough one. Mm -hmm. I think that, that <laughs> book is working pretty hard to like find you something. And also the mutants are there. So can we complain? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do what like, if this movie had mutants in it? That'd be better. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm surprised they didn't find a way to bring the mutants into it. Yeah. It's like one thing to talk about maybe it's is like... for the sequel, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like, you know, uh, through all of the original films, they've been very heavy on social commentary and everything. Do you feel like this movie kind of continues that or pushes it to the side for spectacle? Or <laughs> I mean, what? I think it thought it was, but yeah. it's, like it didn't, it doesn't come out and say it. Like you have the gun being like this artifact that is mm -hmm. supposed to be like this warning to them, but also like they don't really know what it is or what it does or how to use it. So therefore it doesn't mean anything. It's also like a sci-fi laser gun that shoots fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I did think with the gun, I did think it was like, it was like mildly, Interesting and powerful to see the scene where General Fade is like finally wielding it after having figured out how the yeah. trigger works. I thought that was kind of a cool moment, but overall, interesting. Like, I mean, <laughs> just to, just to see because we, you know, I guess we have seen in the original one, it's yeah. just have guns. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it was interesting to see in this world, like one kind of like finally hold one up and be like, you know, something. It's like you see something clicking in him. Like I can yeah. use this to kill someone. It was um, kind of. I know you talked about the running and all that, but yeah. the one, another thing that it said that was that Tim Burton and, and the crew wanted it to be that they had more like that they went ape or had more ape shit moments yeah, and yeah. tantrums or whatever, which like definitely do. But also then you're sort of saying that like the tantrums are inherent to the nature of apes animals right. themselves in all worlds which i don't really know if that's the case or if they do that because that's how we're treating them or yeah. the circumstances arise I, in which and certainly we're not immune to tantrums yeah <laughs> so <laughs> we just freak out when we see water uh, yeah. yeah yeah but it was sort of weird how like yeah that when they finally get him he knew that learns how to use the gun. They basically trap him in a bulletproof room and then he just goes insane and starts like shooting all the bullets. And the right, but then he goes into the past and becomes Abraham Lincoln. Right. So, yeah, 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 so yeah. I don't know how that happens. He uh, learned like, yeah. no from that experience. Yeah. I kept waiting for one of the bullets to like kill him, but it yeah, never right? happens. Yeah, right? Yeah. He just it's kind of goes into around, submission like. of like, I guess I'm, uh, you know, in a cage. Now. Yeah. Well, and it's really <laughs> weird because in the, so in the beginning of the movie, Mark Wahlberg gets captured along with the hot girl uh, and Chris Christopherson, who's her old dad yep. and yeah. like her little brother and all sorts of other people. And it's like not clear that they can talk and so you're thinking, it's oh, it's probably just like so how weird. the other movies were. They can't talk. So he's not sure if he should talk. He talks to them. None of them answer for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then until they're separated, Chris Christopherson is separated from his daughter. And he says, like, don't be scared or whatever. And then you're like, oh, so they can talk? Wait, or is it just them two that can talk? <laughs> like, are they are them two, like, in charge or smarter? And then, like, oh, the movie keeps going for, like, another hour until you find out. No, actually, everyone can talk. <laughs> like, so... It's uh, very weird, but we s they're all in cages, and we see um, Fade come with his niece, and she buys a little girl to be her slave slash pet. And um, That's I, right. I was... Compliments of the house. Uh oh, <laughs> thanks, Paul Giamatti. Yeah. Uh, and so I was like, "Oh, sweet, a uh, kid! Like I'll get to do a child star check-in on this little ape girl." But no, it's just Deep Roy. <laughs> <laughs> It's too much makeup to put <laughs> yeah. on a child. Well, yeah. there are yeah, yeah. Uh, far other, many other ape kids in this movie, but the one with the biggest role with the most ornate costume and little barrettes in her hair and gets to pick out a and slave. An amazing bed. In yeah. It? It's <laughs> just deep Roy. So this was the beginning of a beautiful friendship, I think, here, too. Um, oh, I forgot, too. We got to see ape dentures. Ape yes. dentures. That's true. We did see ape dentures. <laughs> it, 
it like a lot of the ape city so and funny. and the effect shots in this it's it, it gives a lot of it's interesting that like fellowship of the ring came out the same year as this oh god and like there is <laughs> there is still like there's a bunch of like armor and matte paintings and like wide shots and of ape city and it almost is like they're on the fox lot and they're like Jackson's getting all this shit over there. Like we need to get, we need to get like more armor. Like we need to have like a big ground battle. Like it, it feels really interesting of just exploring like the fringes. Cause like Burton's given pretty much a blank check to make this movie and what the fringes of kind of filmmaking magic were up to in 2001 and how there are similar results uh, in these two movies, not to the same effect. Yeah. Even at the end, when all seems lost, Gandalf shows up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a chimp in a space pod. <laughs> I love that they're like in the middle of this like crazy battle, and all of a sudden it's like, oh fuck, there's something in the sky, and then like it comes down, and everyone's like, what the fuck is this? Holy I shit. mean, I know you've seen the movie before, but I, I, I immediately when it showed it something shiny in the yeah. sky, I was like, it's gonna be that. Chip from the beginning of the movie, like it was so obvious. And I just love that Pericles opens it, opens up his mask, and he's like pure of heart, and he just gives the thumbs, thumbs up. up and a smile. And they're all like, "All oh, hail Simos, all oh, praise!" And everyone stops fighting, and then he gets a kick, shit kicked out of him for no reason. He doesn't even know what's happening. Honestly, I think if a uh, if they're like God is here and it was like a tiny baby, I'd be like, what are you fucking talking about? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I was General Thane, I'd be like, fuck this noise. Like, no, it I'm is, in charge of this. Yeah. This is this thing can't talk. This yeah. thing is a baby. This thing ain't got shit on me. <laughs> I'm king of the castle. Yeah. He's friends with Mark I mean, he, he, d- he does knock it about a hundred feet into the air yeah, up against good, the rock I wall. Don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why am I rooting for General Thane? He just Thane wants to go general. back to his cage and lie down and take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's go explain evolution to the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but then uh, conveniently, it, oh, we should talk about the battle. By the way, um, the okay, apes. that was probably the coolest shot. Was the, the giant thousands explosion. of apes flying into the air? I thought it looked hilarious. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it looked like you know someone you know copy paste on a bunch of bodies flying. Through the yeah, sky, and it was which hilarious. I know is not how it works, but yeah. whatever. And that's what it looked like. I did love that the um. I did love that in this, the apes, like you can tell that they're just crazy strong because I thought it was so funny during the battle just to see them like swinging their arms and launching humans up in the sky, <laughs> like it, boom, boom. They and you do. get like, oh, this is why, you know, once the apes became intelligent, uh, since they were so strong that they could just overpower the humans if they didn't have weapons or whatever, mm-hmm. you know? So. Except Mark Wahlberg can take a real beating uh, if they're this strong. <laughs> Well, he's yeah. he's got plot armor. That's obviously. right. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, come plot on. Armor. <laughs> he, he can't be killed. Okay. Uh, Can apes actually not swim? That's not real, that's is it? I don't think that's yeah, true. Yeah, it's just made up for this. That's okay. True. Yeah. I mean, I guess it was like an interesting way to give the humans a little bit of an advantage or whatever, but yeah. It just it seemed was like sort a weird thing. Strange. To add. Yeah. <laughs> Are you Googling it? I'm, I'm Googling apes. <laughs> Can apes not swim? Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm just, I'm just assuming think, I'm going to see an adorable video. I think it video. might be true that they don't like to get their fur wet, mm. but I think they can Fair. swim. No, okay. They can swim. I would think well, they Especially because they had the horses also, so it's like yeah. to take the, for the, the river or whatever. You know, okay, so like. Look at this little the, guy. Look at this. Tyler is showing us a picture of a little ape in a swimming pool. You know, the original movies have the pet plague, right? All the pets right. die, and humanity goes batshit fucking crazy because yeah. we need to have a little guy in our house. <laughs> yeah. So we adopt apes. That's a problem. That feels true. It does feel true. I genuinely am like obsessed with the pet plague yeah. as like a concept of like, yeah, that's why humanity is in any way decent because yeah. we have little guys who live have- in our house. <laughs> and like, we, it, when, it's like taking care of a baby. You got to be kind to a little thing that's defenseless, and that makes you a kinder thing yourself, right? The point is, in this apes, they have horses, like, what, what else? What other animals? These are questions I always have. The original yeah. Planet of the Apes, are there birds? Yeah. <laughs> and then in beneath, there are birds. Yeah. And I'm like, well, what does it mean? <laughs> what does yeah. it mean? <laughs> they even ask him at some point to define a zoo, and he won't. He just yeah. says, like, yeah, apes are, there's not that many left, so we keep them in a cage. Like, he, right? like, like if this is not Earth, what ha- what other animals? Yeah. Why did horses develop, but, like, not dogs? Like, Great what's, question. This is a, 
a world building question that the moment it's not irradiated Earth, I have a million of right, them. Yes. Right. And Why I can't the know. horses talk? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Planet of the horses. Planet of the horses. <laughs> the nightmare of my uh, life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so scary. <laughs> They're all like really long arms and legs standing uh, up. No. <laughs> hey, Jack. Talking. Already scared of Nuke horses. it from orbit. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> talking with peanut butter in their mouths. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah, I wanted the scene if, look, Tim Burton, if you're going to have to wink and, and do all the things to reference the old movies, where's the scene where Ricardo Montalban teaches them how to ride horses? Right. <laughs> yeah, where is the ape circus? Yeah. <laughs> with human There was that tricks. one guy with like a, you know, a little person yeah. collecting tips or whatever. Um, so what else is there to talk about? I mean, are we, we're almost a... About to the ending, I guess. Okay, well, do you want to hear about all of yes. this? Yes, the child uh, stars? Like, Ape children. nepotism. I want to hear about the nepotism. kid whose father told him to throw stones at humans. <laughs> 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 um, okay, so Peter Pan, or Pan, whatever, yeah. kid, uh, Burn, Burn is his name. Yeah. Uh, with an I. Burn yeah. with Burn. an I. We know. <laughs> um, Lucas Elliot Ebrill. Um he did a few more stunt things and acting, but now he's primarily a director and cinematographer of music videos, oh. short films, and feature films, um, including artists like uh, Shiny Toy Guns. He did a couple videos for them. Oh. Uh, so that's what he's up to. Um, Little Human Girl <laughs> uh, is mm-hmm. Callie Crowell. So uh, Mr. Crowell, it was somebody on the crew, like a stunt coordinator, second unit, AD um, and whatnot. And so Callie is plays little human girl, but then there's also ape soccer kids of which there are six <laughs> mm-hmm. and that her was two brothers. <laughs> ape yeah. Soccer. They're playing. Soccer. I think the soccer is when they're making fun of the humans and Helen, the bottom Carter like gets up in their face and is like, who t- said you could throw a ball at a, a human or whatever, you know, in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. Not the basketball scene, Okay, but it's uh, ape soccer and their feet yeah. are shaped different. So it's slightly different. It yeah. I guess obviously. So. <laughs> yeah. So her two Make brothers, Cameron and Joshua are, also in the ape soccer kid crew um and both of them uh still all three of these kids in the crowdwell family still and the mom are all like in stunts and stunt coordinating uh and the dad is still really active um so callie it was an iron man um and then is a driver and a coordinator most recently in films like don't worry darling and shows like twisted metal um cameron uh is still active uh some of his recent credits include geostorm hell uh, yeah yeah. and the rookie uh sounds like this whole family is very active in the the rookie verse yeah um joshua was in films like star trek insurrection and also works on the rookie so this whole family like it's pretty much like they told the stunt crew in the 80s like just bring your kids and we're gonna put the ape makeup on them and they can play <laughs> soccer for a scene because That's then like there's also name. the haberstad family mm-hmm. uh in which dad jeff also worked on the film so ali haberstad played girl pet so mm-hmm. she's the little girl in the cage i guess um she was acted in things like ally mcbeal and the happening but then she left the industry she went to usc she was in the global medical brigade in 2014 she raised 1727 dollars for that charity um and in 2018 she got married to a guy named ross lindley and she now works in advertising (laughs) um i saw her registry yeah um and then did you send her again no because it was 2018 so it's no longer that's terrifying (laughs) yeah Supply lines. I don't yeah. know. That's right. And then her brother Shane, though he is still in the industry, working with the dad. Also on the rookie. Yeah, no, um, he is like a Marvel person, so he's both in the MCU, but also in movies like Madam Web. Ah. So, oh. so yeah, he's still working on stunts. And then the other family, um, the other two families, the Peitzmans. Uh, their dad was a visual effects artist on the movie, and. Um, they are twins. Uh, they went to La Cañada High School and played lacrosse at an elite level. Mm. Um, and Molly now works in restaurants as an operations manager at a Portland place called Stacked Sandwich Shop. <laughs> <laughs> and then Hannah is still in the industry, but she left stunts and she's now primarily a costumer um, for the Marvel MCU shows as well as Palm Royale. Um, so oh, okay. not everyone stayed in stunts, uh, 
And then another kid, Jesse Tipton, um, Mr. Tipton was an AD. And then he, Jesse, uh, did stunts all the way up till 2012 that I can see. And then he went to UNLV Reno, but I'm not sure what he does now. UNLV Reno is not a thing. Uh, <laughs> is it? Are you there's sure? U, there's UNR and then there's UNLV. Okay. It might've been UNR then. Okay. And yeah. I wrote it down. Wrong. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's my bad. But anyways, the entire cast of ape children and actual children was all just children of the crew, which is like, right. I guess it's cool. Bring your kid to work, but also then like, especially the ones that stayed in the industry for so long, just <laughs> like, continuing to be cast by their dad over and over. It's kind of like, okay, yeah, like, right, I don't right. know, but whatever. You know. So do you think that, and maybe they've touched on this in the novelizations, but maybe it's, it's, you know, new ground that we can explore. Do you think there was ever a point in the ape world where they're playing ape soccer or anything else that they're like, there's doesn't say in the rules that humans can't play. And there's like an air bud type situation. <laughs> oh my God. No, it's a human. Yeah. A human air, air bud. Human? Yeah. Oh air God. human. Air human. <laughs> I think the answer is no, no, because the sacred scroll say. The lawgiver. Yeah. Right. The lawgiver really put his foot but down. But you haven't seen this kid play basketball. <laughs> they don't even mention the lawgiver in this movie. They don't. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah. I missed him. Um, there was one other kid I forgot to mention. <laughs> human kid number one. He's not related to anybody, but. Um, Good. He was, uh, <laughs> he is a stunt driver in movies like Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Wow. But he, actually after this movie, at, when he was 16, he lost his leg in a freak trampoline accident what? and is an amputee, wow. but a pro race car driver and still doing Whoa. stunts and stunt okay. driving. Yeah. So he's really cool. Trampolines, Trampolines are, are so dangerous. Yes. Right. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. the same thing. I was like, so oh. dangerous. Yeah. You should never let your Whenever my daughter wants one. to go on one, I'm like, Ew. I wanted one so bad as a kid my mom was like you'll die i <laughs> you can't you might my best friend in high school <laughs> uh, we were jumping on a trampoline and uh she got double bounced and she shattered her ankle uh -huh. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and just and just Ooh. screaming and writhing in pain and i was just like ah mm. <laughs> sorry <laughs> but anyways brett's doing go fine for himself yeah, he's living a full life as a pro race car driver and That's stunt awesome. actor so cool do you think he tells the trampoline story or do you think he has a different story i know he tells it because okay. it's on his i and okay. his website, and I'm sure he does speakers. I think if you're a stunt driver, you don't want to make up that you That's like true. lost your leg right, right, crash right. You're going to be like, freak trampoline accident. Lead accident yeah. yeah, Totally unrelated to my career. Like they burned it afterwards, okay? The trampoline's dead. <laughs> yeah, I hope so, yeah. They took it out back in the yeah. shot. I got yeah. revenge on that trampoline. So yeah, that's like all I have for the child stars, and I was super disappointed mm. that the main child was just Deep Roy. <laughs> so. Yeah. Mm. That's not fun. cool. Wow. I mean, cool for Deep Roy. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> You're genuinely mad about it. On, a, on his way to be an They used an to Oompa put Loompa. children under too yeah, much makeup. makeup. Yeah. Country. What are we doing? Child labor laws? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Let children suffer under ape <laughs> <eighth> makeup. <Yeah. laughs> well, they did for all the kids. Like, the kids of the crew did, but not somebody else. <laughs> well, you know, at the end of the movie, Mark Wahlberg is like, look, there's a spaceship here. It only fits one person. I don't give a shit about any of these people. I got some smooches to give. Yeah, he gave out smooches <laughs> to everybody. I don't care about Pericles. He can he can go sit in his cage, yeah. whatever. He's he probably hands dying. The, the champ over to Ari and da what's her name? Dana? D Danae? The, Danae, Danae, something yeah, Danae. like that. They never say it, by the way. I only know from the caption, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah, it's in the novelization. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But like, hands over this baby. And it's like, you two girls do that. I'm going to hit, <laughs> I'm going to go buy some cigarettes and I'll be back. Yeah. Like, and these, I think it's the right move, honestly. Like, he's not adding anything to that relationship. Those two chicks should get together. <laughs> they yeah. should look into each other's hearts and be like, we can build something. He's not helpful. He's made that very clear. <laughs> also, like this is our world, <laughs> our baby ape. Also, like Pericles is like definitively not Simos, right? Like because the guy. No, he's not. They yeah, just said because no, the guy on yeah. the recording says like, "Oh my gosh, Simos has taken over," and, uh, and he's like too smart. If and he was named Simos, <laughs> it would give up the game of yeah. the twist, so he yeah. can't be. I think right. Simos. Maybe we saw him in the beginning, and he was one of the other yeah. ones. Yeah. Like, I guess maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. he could go back and pause on all the. Yeah, cages and figure and it out. But, uh, it was really sad when Pericles went. Like he just immediately ran. He's like, I just want to sleep in my little bed, See? right? Because yeah. he's programmed I to want to go home, and he had a mate who had a baby. So yeah. sad. Oh like, right. He he's supposed to be a dad. Family. That's probably Simos. And he tried to help Maybe. and just got punched in the face. Yeah. Very sad. Oh, I hope guy. he's okay. I hope he's all right out there. <laughs> 
Pericles. Pericles. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, Mark Wahlberg is like, I got to get out of here, even though I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And he he just doesn't want to be there anymore. Yeah. Like, I don't know where the fuck he thinks he's going. He flies oh, off into the time portal. There is a whole <laughs> subplot about Michael Clark Duncan and uh, Carrie uh, mm-hmm. Fukunaga, uh, like not uh, wanting to be, I don't even they know. Like they have yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is crazy to say Which was loud. really crazy, but um, I said the wrong guy. Kerry Tagawa. It's, not, it's Kerry Tagawa, yeah. yeah. Fukunaga is the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yuki Tagawa. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, there, there's this whole thing, and I just wanted to mention it because I do think that Michael Clark Duncan was like my favorite of all the mm-hmm. He's Yes, he's like, putting he in work. He really in puts in the work. Like he had the best makeup out of everybody. Like, mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's just that they made him a better set of like ape teeth and a mouth, or maybe he just naturally has a bigger mouth than some of these other actors. But yeah, I think just some of them, when they had smaller mouths, they reminded me of like bad Sonic or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Try, like their human teeth on their ape yeah, body just like was not yeah. right. But he, he really went ape. Uh, and, uh, like he just acted more than a lot of other people. That's in true. The character has like a real arc. Too, yeah. I'm not sure yes. all the ape characters do. He's like looking at his friend, general fate and going like, am I loyal to you? Am I right. loyal to the concepts of ape religion? What does it mean to have a soul? Yeah. And like, ex- and like my mentor is left and yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. I did Great. feel bad that after all that, uh, General Krull's character just gets beat to death. Yeah, it's like, yeah. You're like yeah, all right, that's, yeah. I guess that's it for him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Mark Wahlberg flies out. He thinks he's pinpointed the same wormhole, which is that Pass even line curve? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doesn't make any doesn't make any sense. He's like I'm following the dots. Beep beep boop. Here we go. And he's like. He comes out by Saturn. Saturn like, and it ships, cool. ships real fast. He's apparently. like, nailed it, nailed it. <laughs> I see Earth. Bound. I yeah. see Earth. Well, over but there. you think if he came out of the same wormhole, like, why, why isn't the ship there? They immediately went after him. Yeah. It's a time issue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> makes sense. Timey, anyway. wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. Timey wimey. The okay. things that reason. go in first come out last. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. And how that works, we just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, Christopher Nolan made a whole movie spun off from this. <laughs> okay, we've, is, we've this recently established that I have not seen Interstellar, oh, and that they're God. re-releasing it in theaters this summer. Yeah, you gotta go. Yeah. yeah. I'm like an Interstellar hater, because yeah. I oh. don't understand it, I think. Probably. Oh, Ooh, okay. okay. I, was like, I also didn't so enjoy it. Kidding. I'm not having a good time. And everyone was like, well, this time... So <laughs> I was like, you famously yeah. can't understand it if you Unless don't have, you have kids. children. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> if you don't have kids, you can't. I heard that. Can't do it. Yeah, can't understand the movie. Ah, oh, well, that um, explains it. I'm yeah. a sexy young person with no kids. <laughs> Childless millennial. Oh, it's yeah. your yeah. own fault. If you yeah. want to like the movie, have a child. <laughs> like, could I interest you in a Pericles? <laughs> <laughs> I think you have two. Yeah. This is an, a thing I like about this movie is that it acknowledges that chimpanzees will fucking kill you. Yes. And so, no, I yeah. don't. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want a paracletes. will rip your face off. <laughs> it'll be really Thank chill you. for like two years, then it'll get dementia, then it'll rip your arm off. Oh, God, <laughs> Tyler. Hard pass. Dark. Dark. To, like shake hands with a chimpanzee yeah. at a zoo or whatever. Or it'll light or your stir like fry a... on fire yeah. at a restaurant. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that happened in... Uh, Revolution. In, yeah, in Conquest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, boy. The restaurant scene, they like went... <laughs> in, the qui- in the quiet quitting epidemic. <laughs> <go>. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, god okay all right, well uh, he lands yeah he he, he <laughs> sets his sights uh, i must land in washington dc in the mall, how, the mall. The joke? how good is the joke that mark Wahlberg's a shitty pilot yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like pericles lands <laughs> perfectly, perfectly. <laughs> yeah, it's mark like, Wahlberg sh- crashes his ship both <laughs> times <laughs> he doesn't know what the hell he's <laughs> doing so funny. No. yeah he's like i'm the best pilot on this ship <laughs> <laughs> crashes into the mall uh the national mall there um and he's right in front of the uh, Lincoln Memorial, and for some reason he walks into it. Yeah. I, I was like thinking, like, <laughs> why would you too? go see the Lincoln Memorial? I was like, yeah. I was like uh, already... have you ever seen it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's powerful. Yeah. Yes, you, you got you got to walk in. I, I was guess. like, could he yeah. already see from outside that it looked weird, and that's why he walked in, or he's just like, ah, I don't know, I haven't been here for a bit. I'm gonna walk in. Yeah. He's feeling patriotism. That's right. Yeah. He wants to revisit <laughs> the concepts of freedom, he, emancipation. He, he walks in and he's like, it looks, it looks right. Okay, I see there's a guy on a chair. Okay, oh, oh my God. <laughs> it's an ape Lincoln. 
Okay, and then behind I think him, the Ape Lincoln looks amazing. Looks pretty cool. Actually. It's a really yeah. good yeah. visual. If it was just Ape Lincoln without this inscription, <laughs> we would not like this. Everything would have been different. I there, disagree with that. that you disagree? Okay. okay, here's the here's the inscription. It says, "In this temple, as in the hearts of the apes for whom he saved the planet, the memory of General Thade is enshrined forever." Okay, does the fact that it's actually General Thade make it more complicated or less complicated? More complicated. I think it makes it way worse because we were never on Earth this whole movie. So <laughs> how did were they... We? Yeah, oh, yeah exactly. I, yeah. Oh, were there birds? So it's just... <laughs> There's it's, a General Thade on every universe. It opens up so many questions. It makes no sense. I think Tim Burton came out and said, like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense because I was going to explain it in the sequel or whatever. Like, you know... It, Again, the things yeah. that go in That's a cop out. come out loud. That's right. <laughs> Thade goes in. One second, he comes out first. He takes over Earth. He frees all the apes. Congratulations, Ape Earth. I guess, yeah, but and they didn't even have the they didn't have air travel apes. or space travel. So you did understand Interstellar. Yeah, all right, you got oh, yeah. it. Whoa, whoa, what's happening? Yeah. It's my favorite movie. Uh, so yeah. I mean, yeah, what are you? I don't. I, I honestly have no idea. Okay, it's it's, it's baffling to me. I Is, I just enjoy seeing the apes like. In modern, like some yeah, modern police day, car, like, police cars. yeah, yeah. And then there's the ones that like looked like they were out shopping, and they're like, "Oh my god, what?" <laughs> <laughs> and then other ones are like taking photos. Yeah. Like, Does the people. novelization offer any insight into no, this? No, the novelization ends as he leaves the planet of the apes. It has what? none what? of the epilogue in it. Okay, is this because the novelizations come out before the film? I think so. Okay. Yeah, I think this is them like keeping a secret. Oh honestly. my God. <laughs> a glorious secret. Wow. Okay. I, would, I wish the novelization was like, and here's why this happens. Right. Here's the explanation. I mean, we must assume that General Thade crashes on Earth in 1850 and becomes president. <laughs> like, that is the only assumption. I, I I guess. Or I unless the Lincoln Memorial so was much. there and they took and down they, just the- just replaced the yeah. head, maybe. <laughs> maybe. maybe. And the Possibly. foot. Yeah. Yeah. Because like the, the rest of the town is the same. The rest of technology is the same, which yeah. to me implies like some level of human development. And also we very clearly see the Washington Monument, which yeah. is not changed. But what should they have changed it to? A banana. A <laughs> is that, is that <laughs> too obvious? Yes. 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 Best yes. thought. A giant good. banana? No, no, no here's, a, I was here's, like, uh, here's, giant a, here's my beef ape. with this movie, right? <laughs> we get we get we get one we get one ape memorial, right? Yeah. You cowards, just go to Mount Rushmore. Give us mm. oh, four <laughs> apes. Four oh. apes. Yeah, but then you gotta ape make up fake heroes <laughs> that we haven't seen yet. I love that the uh, wiki no, says you like, don't. No, you don't. You don't have to because you have Thane. He's a chimpanzee. Yeah. You get a orangutan, a gorilla, <laughs> yeah. and then one more of yeah. any of them. And then you're like, what done. if one of them was yeah. like a cyborg, like a lady, <laughs> a, cyborg. a lady, <laughs> a lady, a lady ape, <laughs> or like a human. Hear me out. A mutant, <laughs> a mutant, a thin face, a malformed yeah. mutant. Yeah, a radioactive freak. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <A> radioactive <laughs> cowards. <laughs> <laughs> they could have uh, done again. It. I am the done. number one lover of Beneath the Planet of the Apes of all time. <laughs> I'm very pro mutant. They are mm -hmm. fucking sick freaks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> agree. And I think they should be in this movie. <laughs> I almost Great. thought they were going to because that one guy that they show that's like uh, on the screen going like Mayday, we need help. It looks like his face is yeah. all fucked up. I think he's just old. Yeah. Is, is were they trying to show that he was rapidly aging as like they were moving through this storm? Like I feel no, like I think they were just on that planet for a really long time until okay. they died out. And yeah. it was the same guy, the same actor who was like the captain or whatever. Um, they should get to the crashed spaceship and realize there's a beneath the planet of the apes under there. Right, right, right. Like, let's just cram it. <laughs> they should sing that um, all things bright and beautiful song again. <laughs> yeah. And then like, oops, bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's time to go back, Tim Burton. I feel like, isn't Mark Wahlberg constantly talking about like the radioactive core of his ship? And they, yeah, right? that's like, what they blast like, everybody ah, with. the Alpha yeah. and the Omega, they're right. going to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Blow it up. I know. It, yeah, it is oddly divorced from the atom bomb, this movie. Mm -hmm. has like, nothing to do has nothing with it. has nothing to do with it. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. There's like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's like basically no social commentary any, at all, yeah. like, in my opinion. I mean, I got to imagine, so we said that Tim Burton was trying to put in all the things they were too scared to do in all the past ones, right? But I got to imagine that 
part of the reason he maybe tried to make it so sexy other than just you know liking so it sexy. um was that in the second one he was gonna finally do the ape child hybrid that has uh, been uh teased in the the development of every single movie like they're like we gotta do an ape human <laughs> child we gotta do an ape human child and then they're always like nah 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 don't do it the it's too weird are too weird yeah <laughs> it is weird yeah i mean we you, you just guys don't... have talked about it, but like the decency of the original movie to be like, and Taylor won't sleep with Nova. Right. Yeah. She is an idiot baby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just can't cross the line. Right. Like, it's just too much to be like, and then this ape and this person did it. Think about yeah, it. They spent the whole movie it. trying to make like, you think that like, Ari is so it. into it that yeah. it is yeah. fine. I don't want to think about what's going on down there, yeah, yeah. period, <laughs> let alone yeah. like, I also did read that there would be endless articles about it these days. Everyone would be like, right. that's the only thing people talk about now. Yeah. Before <laughs> Helena Bonham Carter came on and then after she came on, like the Ari character was supposed to be like a princess and her dad was supposed to be like a king, which like, I guess she wanted to, Oh, let's make it like political instead. And she's sure. like liberal and she's like an activist or whatever, which I feel like they still could have done that with her as a princess. Mm -hmm. And then that general being in love with her and wanting to marry her would have made a lot more sense to me because because mm. as it is, it's like, why the hell does he want to marry her? She obviously yeah. hates his guts. They don't have like the same beliefs. Like, you guys it, think they used to date? Yeah. I, I mean, Maybe. yeah, because it seems like he's been trying to get with her for a while. He's like, I'm in love with you or whatever he said. <laughs> they to her. Yeah, yeah, they went to Ape Preparatory Academy. And mm. yeah. <laughs> she was like, then I went to college, college. and now I'm like a little more yeah. woke. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I just feel like... Yeah, the, the ape society in this one, there's immediately too much going on. It's all really complicated. Everything else was like so easy to follow. Yeah, <laughs> well, and they have to films. like declare a martial law instead of just sending out an army. Yeah, like we have to just like there's, on it. there's <laughs> senators and there's not a clear like, there's not a clear like, oh, the, all the gorillas are just the warriors and all the chip. There's like well, different variations all over the place. It is, we do get, you know, the first movie, there's literally a courtroom, like, drama. A courtroom yeah, drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like yeah, there's a museum but, and things like that. But yes, it, this one is more confusing. It's just too But much I don't know that it's more, because stuff. it's more stuff. It's yeah. just like, I, I just think you can see the, they changed it to be a senator and his daughter, but they didn't change all of the bones that were like written into mm -hmm. the movie that yeah. it was a monarchy. Sure. So it's still, they still act like, you know, and the way the movie is set up is that it's just like a monarchy, but like they don't actually do it the way that those other movies were like, we're going to have a council and argue about, you know. And are, <laughs> and are they saying at the end that General Thade's family line is descended directly from Simos because Simos is the one who killed like got angry and killed all the humans in the first place? I think yeah, that's I think what so, Zeus yeah. was saying. OK, that's yeah. kind of what I that's what I thought. I think we're thinking about it more than they did. Potentially. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> certainly. Potentially. I mean, like, has there ever been an episode where we didn't do that? That's true. <laughs> That's true. Also, just to, like one final point on the the crossing the interspecies line. Uh, like, Mark Wahlberg's pelvis would just be dust. <laughs> like, what? Why would you go there? Why would you say that? <laughs> What yeah, is why wrong would with you? you say that? Why would you say that? Because we're talking about the mechanics of it, and it's like, yeah, she's like, oh, like, nope, I killed him. Like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, my God. Unpacking it until... Immediately um, stop this cover. <laughs> I mean, yes, correct. Honestly, I, yeah. I don't I think, think I've ever said this in 251 deeper. episodes to be like, absolutely this is, not. This is the sound of me digging the hole deeper? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where's that sound effect? I don't, yeah, I don't have it. I, don't I have rescind it. my statement. Oh, my God. <laughs> We have a guest. <laughs> this is the problem. This is the problem with opening the gate. Is that like I don't want to think about yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. We're and gonna blame Tim spent, Burton and we're like gonna pardon you. I just for twenty <laughs> seconds and was like, no. yeah. Maybe. Well, if she's on top and she's doing it. Like, <laughs> like, and then I was like, I don't think she would be. I don't think no. this is because like the relationship dynamic. I think I don't think that's how they would do it. Oh God. And like I don't want to. But think eventually. That but stuff. eventually. I don't want to think any part of it. I don't want to. I hate that it's in there now. I never in my life have thought about that. Oh my God. Not right. Ever. Okay. So I where can people it. follow you on social media? <laughs> There's a new. Yeah. Is that what Beneath the Planet of the Apes was about? No, okay. Sorry. Yo, no. If the whole world hadn't blown up and beneath the planet of yeah. the apes, and if nobody got shot in the face, mm. I think Taylor and Brent and Nova could have had a little thing. Sure. They're a little sure. thruple, yeah. and I stand on that. Mm -hmm. Repopulate um, the earth. Yeah, that wrestling scene between <laughs> Brent just, and, uh, yeah. and Taylor. There's a little 
got some something going on. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Two oh, guys yeah. who look kind of the same. Yeah. <laughs> no. And like, Are you me? And like, there's, From the there's something, just because I didn't get the chance to do it due to my scheduling, <laughs> this would have been all we talked about. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but there are points in that movie when Nova's like looking at Brent and she's like, mm, okay. Yeah. She yeah. like fully checks him Upgrade. out a bunch. Downgrade. I mean, Upgrade. better teeth. Yeah. yeah. And then she's like, but I do have romantic love for Taylor. Mm-hmm. So I can have a hot side piece and my beautiful husband. Yeah. And then they like each other and can speak the same language. Good for them. They also can kiss. <laughs> the future. Apes. Whoa. It's the apes. It's true. And that's what I want out of Kingdom of the Planet of the, the Apes. apes. <laughs> More I, ape sex. I, I continue I continue to see this new group of movies. As I'm waiting. It's like Challengers, but Planet of the I Apes. I was literally going to say, <laughs> is this a prequel to Challengers? The boys should kiss. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> Brothel of the Planet of the Apes. I'm just waiting for these new movies to end with like a spaceship crashes and then like Michael Fassbender comes out and he's like, what's going on out here? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> he's back. I would lose my like, mind. Taylor. That would be no, no, it's like, me. It's David. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have a little what, flute. What can I fuck here? <laughs> I, I've been to all the planets. Again, what's here to fuck? I am pro-human <laughs> being. I want to see human men on these ape planets in loincloths. Bring oh, it back. Sassy Fassy I, in this franchise. Make uh, it happen. I think he could, he's like a modern Heston. It was said to me and I was like, mind yeah. you. Like, that's it. Yeah, that's he has fair. the teeth. Like, he has it. Yes. He already made like out with himself in, yes. the, in, you, in the alien you. franchise. Yeah. It's true. Thank you. <sighs> anyway, that's that's what I'm hoping for. Okay. I, want, I want human beings back on the planet of the apes. I don't like looking at CGI apes. I like looking at human men. Yeah. <laughs> fair, fair. Let's um, see what happens. Woo. So this movie actually did really good, right? It did pretty well, I think. Let's take a look. Thank you so much um, the for critical me response. Get on my oh hell yeah! <laughs> Please. The this critical response was uh, not good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the box office. Let's see. It said that it uh, grossed sixty-eight point five million opening weekend. Mm. That's good, right? Uh, and that's in July two thousand one dollars. Yeah, that's pretty I- good. So. It was the second highest opening weekend of 2001 after Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Mm. Um, Take that, Tim Roth. <laughs> 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 you could have been Severus Snape. Snape. <laughs> but apparently I'm glad he's uh, not. Yeah. 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 Say it. Yeah. Say oh, it. yeah. Apparently, it's still, it wasn't good enough for them to pursue yeah, a sequel. They, which is pretty crazy. It was an expensive movie. Yeah. And I think that, you know, my guess is that the public sentiment and <laughs> critic sentiment was like, wah, wah. Just we blame may have 9, shown up, but we will not show up again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you could, uh, I suppose, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. And I'm yeah. sure that they did, yeah. gratefully. 9-11 yeah. has a lot to do with apes. That's right. Mm. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so there's no, there's, there's no explanation for Ape Lincoln at the end. Nope. <laughs> And there never will be never. until the return of Michael Fassbender. <laughs> never. And sadly, he's not even actually called Ape Lincoln because it's fade. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was a fan creation. Yeah. An ingenious fan creation. Right, right. Just invert one letter and you're good. Yeah. Um, really good. It's, it's great. It's great. Uh, Do you think that General Fade also got shot in the head in a theater? Ooh. Like, did he also have that happen? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of that's a, a prerequisite <laughs> for the monument, yeah, right? Yeah, I was going to say, right? like, like right? how many things have to be the same for yeah. the monument to be constructed in the exact same? Ape, <laughs> ape or human assassin? Mm. Mm. Ooh. Watch Manhunt what on if Apple TV ape, Plus to find What if it's an ape actor? <laughs> yeah, we're talking Manhunt yeah. in 10 minutes. <laughs> what if it's an ape actor who performed as a human? Oh. Like, oh. <laughs> His characters were human characters. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That, you know, that is what has been missing from this franchise is a play within a film yes. of, mm. you know, like a, a Thor situation. Just make or, sure that uh, yeah, you guys t- uh, uh, head yes, to- Our um, ape American cousin. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Head to uh, Apple TV Plus right now to watch the new show Ape Hunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> About the assassination of Ape Lincoln. That's good, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Oh my gosh, the, 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 this world is bleeding into <laughs> ours. That's oh right. God. The apes um, are taking over. So yeah, I mean, there's nothing to predict because there's no full on sequel to this. We just reboot the whole thing. That's and you, right. Well, you have books to read. Right? right. You can oh, read oh, more that's about true. it. In that's true. Oh, so it's two gosh. spinoffs from yeah. the, oh my God. I haven't read them yet. I can't even imagine they, what they those would be They appear to be about. prequels, to be honest. Mm. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, yeah, so. That makes sense. What a, so does the junior novelization take out the horniness? I haven't read it. Oh, okay. Mm. We'll One have to hope. listen. Yeah, Head to their podcast to listen. that one so I can go see Challengers. It's probably a great choice. Oops. The ape actors in that movie look great. Yes. 
um, yeah. So like, I guess, uh, you know, um, 10 years later we get rise of the planet of the apes, mm-hmm. but, and before, now I have to look at photorealistic apes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. And James Franco. Sure. Academy the Award one. nominated <laughs> apes. Just in the one. Visual effects. Apes. <laughs> um, he dies of ape plague. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Simeon flu. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. Simeon Lou? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, 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 do not nope, go there. Nope. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, uh, before we get to what's coming next, we have a rating system or what? Oh yeah, we sure do. Uh, how many uh, <laughs> greaser eight bong hits would you give <laughs> 2001's? I love when they run out and they're all like, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's like players. a guitar riff. <laughs> yeah. It oh, feels yeah. like a rich, full world for that one moment. <laughs> the score, I did not like it. I hate Danny Elfman famously, I his work, and I didn't like it. I, I, it doesn't I, sound I, very Elfman y either. No. Yeah. No. Well, it's kind of, it's interesting. It's kind of, uh, this is like right before he does uh, Spider Man mm-hmm. and then Incredible Hulk and stuff. And you can hear some of that. Mm-hmm. And also, you get the kind of like, this is the age of the CG uh, opening sequence and all this stuff, and which happens in Spider Man as well and Hulk. Uh, so I don't know. I could hear it. I could hear it in there, but it's not a good score. There was no boys choir. Instead, they no. brought in Paul Oakenfeld for the <laughs> remix. Yeah, Paul, yeah. At the height of his powers. <laughs> Bring in Paul Oakenfeld for a remix. Yeah. No, the score is not good. It's like basically this like recurring like percussion thing that kind of yeah. makes up. But do you theme. have it on vinyl? No, I don't. Oh, okay. It's not one I would Good buy. for you. I don't think I would buy that one. There's nothing to... Yeah. There's nothing to remember. Paul Oakenfold. There's though. no theme. For the, there's no Pericles theme. That's true. Otherwise, I would maybe buy it. <laughs> the Pericles theme. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, this movie sucks. Okay. I'm going to give it I'm gonna give it two uh, groups of ape greasers hitting a bong um, out of 10. Because I think like there's a couple things like, yes, the makeup is really great. Um, I think a lot of the, I personally like the ape movement and you know, how they're portrayed in this a plus bit. one for Paul Giamatti. Mm. Yeah. Paul Giamatti. I love, <laughs> no, you know, we haven't spent any time on Giamatti. I know. I mean, who said just, he would kill his agent if he didn't get to play an ape. It was, it was yeah, I love that that news was out. It's like so great that he king. just loved this, love this role. Um, but yeah, this movie after, <laughs> after the amazing, like five films before this, like, okay, there's even some like missteps in there, maybe a little bit, but just like, I don't even know what the heck is going on here. It's like, we're, we're, we, we dive into like a way more complicated ape world that doesn't make sense. There's just the horniness is odd. <laughs> the choice of like having all the humans talk, everything is weird. It's just like, what, what is the point of this version? What are we doing? Like, why are we doing these things differently? Why are we seeing this? I, I just don't really, you know, I, I went into this, um, Hannah and I talked about this a little bit uh, before we recorded that, like it kind of went into this thinking like, I haven't seen it forever. Like maybe yeah. it's going to be one of those movies that I look back and watch it as an adult and be like, Hey, there's like actually like legitimately good things. And on this podcast, we tend to be very forgiving to yeah. like sequels True. and stuff. Um, this one, I don't think there's much to redeem. No. <laughs> Not much to redeem. Uh, yes, the ending is an insane ending that people still talk about. And I guess I would say that's probably the only like enduring thing from this movie huh. Two. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm also going to give it a two, uh, bong hits from ape greasers. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, I think we talked a lot in the past five films, how a lot of the coolest ideas and developments that they came up with were necessitated by low budgets and budget cuts and made them uh, come up with some really cool things. And this one, they're like, you have all the money in the world to do this. And as a result, there's just no direction. There's no message or it's not saying anything about anything really. Um, And so uh, it just kind of loses all meaning in, in the space spectacle i guess um you could say like and and i think that like just ape makeup is not enough to you know like make the movie or why this movie should exist like yeah. they could have said something anything you know they have the gun and thing in there a little bit like yeah. just say it more somehow it's you like know the wrong moment in time like two years later and you're right. making a movie about how like an unjust war is yeah. like you can't yeah. justify yeah. invasion or whatever like we're so close to something meaningful <laughs> that yeah. you could say with planet of the apes uh but we were, yeah. we were just we we're like six months out right yep. that and of course yeah the horniness like you said is super weird and just not <laughs> 
for anything or anyone. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, I'm usually... I can think of one person. It's probably, it's, it's, it's probably for someone, yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I usually don't like Tim Burton general. I guess I like Edward Scissorhands. And then after that, I get sick of him mm-hmm. and Danny Elfman and Helena Bonham Carter, you know, like, and I understand <laughs> this is the beginning of this, but I don't like any of it. And so I did not like this. <laughs> hey, at least Johnny Depp wasn't in this one. Thank God. <laughs> that we okay. know of. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Can you, I mean, the he would have taken away from Giamatti, I bet. Yeah, and it would have been yeah, horrible. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, I'm also going to give it, we're going to be in uniform agreement here. I'm going to get two bong hits from uh, some ape greasers. Uh, I think that the thing, I I agree with everything you guys said, the changes that were made to this, they seem unmotivated. Like there's not a reason why all the people can talk. There's not a reason why we're kind of seeing it at this point in time. Uh, And I think that that's where it really falls short. It's like there could be, there's a lot of interesting things. Like apes is such a, uh, perfect metaphor for a lot of social commentary. Like it just fits so many ideas so well. And you have to try really hard to just whiff completely on that. And this movie accomplishes that. Yeah. This is out of 10, by the way, yes. if we didn't uh, oh, make yes, that clear. Yes. Yeah. I did know that. Okay. Uh, I am so going to give it like a three and a half. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like half a hit. And they're like, oh, you know, like, <laughs> I also really wanted to like this movie. I want it to be good. And I think the first half, I'm like on the level. I'm like willing to be won over. And then it whiffs it, as we're saying. It's not good. It has a lot of problems. I like Mark Wahlberg. I kind of like the ape shit. Like Mm -hmm. it's got some ideas in it and some visuals that are compelling. And then I get super bored <laughs> and the ending is nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not good. I can't say it's good. I can't be like, gentleman six. Like it's not there. <laughs> yeah. It's simply not anywhere near that. But I also, I'll watch it again someday in my life. You know, oh, like wow. somebody will be like, yeah, wow. have you seen this movie in a long time? And I'll be like, let's pop it on. You know, like I think that's true. I, you know, I think I would say like you want to watch a different apes movie. <laughs> <laughs> if we're doing like the sequence someday, like if I have children and I understand Interstellar, and <laughs> we've done that, but it's time to watch the Planet of the Apes franchise. I'm not skipping this. No, no. I think no. this is important in uh, in the greater arc. Like. If you go from original apes, then you take like a 20 year break. And they're like, what were we doing? We tried something, <laughs> right? I think you got to see what we tried. We tried a mistake. To then, it shouldn't have been to done. then go, okay, next we're doing Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Very grounded, very current day, very like realistic. And I think it's so in response to the deep failures of mm-hmm. 2001 Planet of the Apes to be like, it's too apey, it's too makeup y, it's mm-hmm. too outlandishly sci fi or whatever. That to say like, okay, course correct, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I, you can't skip it. You got to see the bad okay. thing to really appreciate Fair. the good thing. It is a really good example. You have of, the highs and lows. If somebody ever asks, it's like, what's an example of a movie where it's like the climax of the movie is the lead character just getting the fuck out of the story as fast as possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a literal deus ex machina, right? <laughs> yep, and then yep. he <laughs> takes that machina out of town. Bye. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, I'm over it, bye. <laughs> I'll kiss you, I'll kiss you, and peace out. Yeah. <laughs> Smooches all around. Smooches. You want to see some really good makeup that the movie was so reviled it didn't get nominated for an Oscar? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. It should have been. Yeah. It should have been. It's it really amazing. Been. Yeah. But movie, bad. Everyone hated it. Yeah, uh, yeah three and a half. Call I feel call. like I can okay. see why. I mean, Maestro. <laughs> I can see why all of the apes enthusiasts that we interviewed like really don't like this movie because it feels like the original series has such a legacy and like yeah. all of this like really powerful like Hollywood history and importance and blah blah blah. And then like this movie comes out and you're just like, what even? Like, right. Like, yeah. What are they even doing? Why did you do that to Trump <laughs> Heston? He was so old. Like, what a waste. <laughs> yeah. When all the references and winks don't mean anything like you yeah. call the guy Zayas but it doesn't have anything and ever and yeah. they have um what's her name Linda um Linda Hamilton, Hamilton Nova yeah. she's just like a random Linda. ape lady or whatever or whatever. human lady I don't yeah. remember I mean we know it but, is pretty dope that they got Charlton Heston on a deathbed sure. movie being like no being like guns are bad Linda right Harris. <laughs> Linda Harrison so. Linda Harrison not yeah Linda sorry Hamilton. not Linda yeah, Hamilton yeah, yeah, uh, I was just yeah. listening yeah. to a yeah. Terminator yeah. pod actually yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah uh <laughs> It just, and every time they do a line or a quote or a reference, it's just like, that's not the right, like, there's a character named Nova, 
but it's a random like the I think it's the ape lady that's doing mm-hmm. the the strip tease or whatever. It's, it's just like the, no, no. When one of the apes is like, "Get your stinking hands off me, you damn dirty human," you're like, nobody would say that, but Sean yeah, Heston. Right, like, right, that's, right. That's an organic thing really? to that specific man. Yeah. yeah, the underbite's part of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It really is. <sighs> oh, boy. Really well, it has. sounds sounds like we all uh, watched this one and thought. Uh, <laughs> yes, but this one seems different. <laughs> 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 But hey, good news is coming. Uh, we got Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Jesus. In- <laughs> Rise of yeah, the he's Apes. Risen. He's, risen. Yeah. he's risen indeed. Um, and his name is Caesar. And we like him almost as much as the original Caesar. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Um, that's, that's what's up next. Okay. We'll be talking about that next week. Um, but first, we got to just... Uh, Shut down launch operations. All right. Thank you. Thank you to everyone for listening this week. Thank you to Hannah for being here. Thank you here. for having me and, and for letting me do my dance. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, Hannah, where can people uh, check out authorized novelizations? Yeah, we are on the platforms that podcasts are on. Spotify, Apple, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, search authorized novelizations podcast. We read novelizations. We watch the movies. We talk about how they differ and how the adaptation works. Blah, 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 blah. It's super fun. It's a lot of homework, and it would be awesome if somebody was listening. <laughs> um, I personally am on Twitter and Instagram and Letterboxd, and I don't post on. Mo- I mean, I Letterboxd. I use like a diary, yeah. right, <laughs> as one must. But uh, I'm a very easy Twitter follow. I'm I'm posting once a week, tops. So nice. Very <laughs> low, low commitment, and I'm tweeting about shit like Charlton Heston, his teeth. <laughs> like I'm getting horny for guys who were hot in 1982. Like, right. I'm having. I'm I'm fun. I promise. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, you guys should check out uh, if, if you're enjoying our apes coverage. Authorized novelizations is covering apes as well, so yeah. you, you can dive in there for a different. Hear take more on. about what's actually going on in those books because yeah. I tell you, I read a book, we talk about it, I throw it out of my right. brain. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I just gotta Same. make space. Yeah. I feel bad, but I gotta. <laughs> Uh, all right. I think that's going to bring us to the end of Plan the Apes 2001. Um, before we sign off here, Eliz, where can people reach out? Email us at sequelrights at gmail.com and find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sequel Rights. And also listen to all of our episodes on our YouTube channel. Yes, rate and review wherever you're listening. And what I want to see on the comments of this YouTube <laughs> episode is tell me who's on your ape Mount Rushmore. Ooh. <laughs> which apes <laughs> yeah, would which you ape? fuck? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, Ape, Mount, Ape, Ape Mount Rushmore in uh, fuckable boning. order. Yeah, uh, <laughs> for boning. <laughs> Mount Rushmore. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> you guys. Okay, to close out the episode. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. You may remember last week we had our big 250th episode and we announced that we were going to do away with copywritten music <laughs> and uh, only play AI recordings of random songs that are made up uh, but have some sort of uh, connection to the film. And this week is the first time that, yeah, we have like one that is legit connected to Planet of the Apes 2001. The title of the song is Ape Lincoln. About our best friend, Ape Lincoln. Yeah, About yeah. our best friend, <laughs> Ape Lincoln. Lincoln. Rest in peace. <laughs> and as you listen... A martyr to the cause. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you enjoy this. It's supposed to be in the style of his inaugural march. <laughs> so, as he was celebrated president of Planet of the Apes, or whatever the fuck. Earth, I don't know. Who Earth. <laughs> Ape America. <laughs> America. Ape America. <laughs> Love it. Um... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you next week for Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I watched the film The Apes in Control. But at the end it took a while to Ape Lincoln appear that was so grand. Leaving me puzzled trying to understand. Oh, Ape Lincoln, what do you mean? In the chaos of apes, you're a strange scene. A symbol of power, a leader divine But your presence leaves me questioning mine Was it a metaphor, a message profound? Or just a strange twist leaving me confound? As the credits roll I scratch my head Trying to make sense of what the film said Oh, Ape Lincoln, what do you mean? In the chaos of apes, you're a strange scene 
A symbol of power, a leader divine But your presence leaves me questioning mine Perhaps it's a commentary on power and might Or a reminder that history's not always right But Dick Lincoln, you leave me perplexed In this a dominated world, what comes next? Oh, Abe Lincoln, what do you mean? In the chaos of apes, you're a strange scene. A symbol of power, a leader divine. But your presence leaves me questioning mine. So ponder and wander on into the night, trying to decipher what you signify. Abe Lincoln, a mystery yet untold. In the planet of the apes, you break them all.